Since a lot of information was presented in the interview, let me summarize some of the most salient details. The patient was in crisis because her six-year relationship with Peter was ending. She had not been eating or sleeping and was extremely anxious, bereft, and distressed. Although she described Peter as the love of her life, she made it clear that she had to do all the work in the relationship and that if she didn't, it would fall apart. She was extremely self-sacrificing and clearly the caretaker. Peter had no career, little money, and seemed to be highly narcissistic and quite needy. He expected the patient to accept his having affairs with other women. The present crisis was precipitated by Peter telling her he had fallen in love with someone else and intended to marry her. The patient's proclivity towards self-sacrifice and taking care of others originated in her early family relationships. She described her father as very narcissistic. The only way she could get close to him was by being his pet, someone he could show off to others. Mother was described as a depressed alcoholic who resented the patient for being close to her father. There seemed to be no room for the patient to express her wishes, needs, or feelings. Father's self-centeredness didn't allow it, nor did mother's fragility and withdrawal. Father explicitly directed her not to be angry at mother, encouraging her instead to be understanding. The patient said that she has spent her whole life being, quote, understanding. The aim of the formulation is to understand what the patient wants help with and how the therapist can best provide that help. A control mastery case formulation begins with summarizing key childhood traumas. The patient's goals for therapy are identified next. These are adaptive goals, some of which are conscious and some of which may be unconscious and therefore need to be inferred. Next, we focus on likely impediments or obstructions to goal achievement. These obstructions are formulated in terms of the patient's unconscious pathogenic schemas, which include pathogenic beliefs, identifications, and pathogenic compliances. And finally, we try to anticipate how the patient is likely to test her pathogenic beliefs in the therapeutic relationship and what she will need from the therapist in order to disconfirm her pathogenic beliefs, compliances, and identifications. I will now describe the primary traumas that we inferred for the patient. One, the patient's early relationship with her narcissistic father impeded the development of her ability to focus on herself and her needs. Father treated her more like his wife than his daughter. Two, mother resented her for being close to father, which created intense feelings of guilt in the patient. Three, growing up in her dysfunctional family left her feeling lonely, anxious, and extremely worried, especially around her depressed, alcoholic mother. Next, I'll describe the primary goals that we inferred for this patient. One, to attend to her own needs rather than the needs of others, to be less of a caretaker. Two, to successfully end her relationship with Peter. Three, to feel less anxious, distressed, and overwhelmed. Four, to have greater access and to feel more entitled to her angry feelings. Five, to experience her feelings, goals, ambitions, and to have a more distinct sense of herself as a presence in the world. Six, to finalize her divorce. 
Obstructions are the pathogenic beliefs, unconscious identifications, and compliances which impede the patient from achieving her goals. These are the obstructions that we formulated for this patient. One, she believes that she must comply with others' needs and completely subjugate herself in order to be loved, particularly by men. Two, she believes she should be satisfied with whatever she gets. Three, she idealized her narcissistic father and feels that her role in relationships is to comply with men's narcissistic needs. Four, she feels obligated to play along with other people's illusions instead of insisting on her own view of reality. In other words, she settles for appearances in place of reality. Five, she feels overly responsible for other people's happiness. Six, she has unconsciously identified with her weak and submissive mother and therefore presents herself as incompetent, helpless, and as someone who cannot be alone or make it on her own. One of the primary ways that patients work in psychotherapy is by testing their unconscious pathogenic beliefs in the therapeutic relationship. These are the tests that we anticipated would occur in the therapy for this patient. One, she will test to see if she can put her needs ahead of others. She may need direction, permission, and strong encouragement from the therapist to do so. Two, she will test the therapist to see how he reacts to her feeling critical of others, especially of men. She will need his encouragement and approval to express her critical feelings. Three, she will test the therapist to see if he can help her feel less responsible for others. She will need his help to feel less responsible and may need him to demonstrate that he does not feel excessively responsible for her feelings. Four, she will test to see if the therapist accepts her presentation of herself as incompetent and helpless. She will need acknowledgement of her competence and intelligence. Five, she may test the therapist to see if he is comfortable with her expressing anger. She may need permission and encouragement from him to do so, and may also need the therapist to express anger on her behalf. Six, she will need the therapist's help in not allowing men to take advantage of her. She may, for example, test to see if the therapist will take advantage of her or be excessively gratified by her compliments and by her submissiveness. Seven, she will need the therapist's support and encouragement to expand her world. So we'll now view four brief segments from various sessions of the therapy. As you view these segments, be sure to keep the case formulation in mind and pay special attention to what particular pathogenic beliefs the patient might be trying to disconfirm and what she needs from the therapist to help her to do so. The segments present rich clinical material that is naturally very complex. For the purpose of demonstrating key points and concepts, we will focus only on one or two main ideas for each segment.